Okay, so I have here a wide variety of slugs for obviously shotguns. We're going to be talking about why solid projectiles like these conicals you see here or slugs like this that are rear heavy, why they can't be used in smooth bores, whether it be 12, 20, 16, 32 gauge, whatever gauge you can think of. We're going to be discussing why slugs like these don't work unless they're attached to some sort of a tail wad or something to give it drag. Now, we get asked, I'm not even kidding, multiple times a week, hey, can you guys stick a 41 Magnum or 44 Magnum, some kind of pistol bullet or even rifle sometimes, bullets in shotguns, smoothbores, and just see what happens. Well, we've done that. I want to start off with this right here. This is a 357 Magnum 148 grain it's actually a 358 caliber but it was a 357 magnum bullet when i got them so this one it actually hit the no uh, the dirt nose on it got lucky you can see if i set it like this it didn't hit square on it does have a little bit of a lean to it it hit almost nose on and uh, that's what i would call a lucky shot I don't know how far away this was uh, fired before it hit the dirt, but I can tell you this was fired from probably 7 or 10 yards out of our smoothbore 410, one of ours anyway. We did a video back in 2023 of us shooting these. We started at 42, so I guess it could have been 42 yards, and the dirt it would have hit is about 110 yards away. So uh, if that was the case, then this one was really lucky that it hit nearly nose on, square on, whatever you want to call it there, but... The sides, this is hard cast lead, by the way. You can see it's not really damaged. It didn't hit rear first. Just a uh, lucky shot there. Most of the time, through a smooth bore with a solid projectile, or again, something like that, that's uh, rear heavy, not nose heavy, for the most part, they'll hit sideways. They will tumble in the air, and uh, you won't have good accuracy at longer ranges. About 20 yards is the limit for decent accuracy out of them. Same case for this one right here. This is a 58 caliber conical. This is, I believe it's 200 grains. And uh, yeah, it's completely solid. Again, conical. This is a 24 gauge slug or 58 caliber rifle of some kind. But uh, since we're dealing with shotguns here, 58 caliber is 24 gauge. Now we haven't tested these because my 24 gauge, yes, it's nearly cylinder bore it barely has any choke whatsoever it's not even ic the muzzle on my 24 gauge is very very thin and i don't want to shoot slugs through it even though it is nearly cylinder bore and you can easily easily just push these right through the barrel i just don't want to risk uh, damaging my 24 gauge those are as you probably can imagine very very rare and hard to come by then we come to this guy right here this is a 45 acp 230 grain conical you don't really see pointed bullets in 45 acp too much but you can get them i believe uh, this one was cast and sent to me by one of you guys i don't typically see conicals like this in uh 45 acp too often but it is cool nonetheless again 230 grains now what we do with this is actually load it into a sabo a 50 cal sabo which I will pull out of this drawer. Give me one second. All I managed to find was the 44 cal sabos. This won't exactly fit it because obviously this is 45 cal. Stand back up here. It's just a little bit too big, but you can see how they work there. These are uh, intended for rifled barrels, which I do have a rifled 32 gauge H&R. It is a 510 bore. These are 510 diameter it's plastic they switch down in 50 cal you know straight 500 diameter bores mostly used in muzzle loaders but you can use them in the rifled h and r 32s too and uh, the red ones are 50 cal 45 goes on the 50 cal to 45 sabo and these do pretty dang well out of the 32 gauge Wait, you've never heard of a sabo these are bore diameter or very very close to it of a given firearm these come in obviously 12 gauge 20 gauge and maybe 410 i'm not quite sure but definitely 12 and 20 gauge as you can see right here this one is for 12 gauge and it lets you shoot sub caliber 
projectiles in your rifle, shotgun, whatever it may be, with uh, pretty good accuracy for the most part. We've uh, had some serious hits and misses with both 12 and 32 gauge here. We don't have a rifled barrel 20 gauge yet, but we are working on getting one. But uh, depends on what Sabo you have. These are the Paradox Expander Sabo Slug. We did not have good luck out of these. The Sabo pedals, they failed and uh, hurt accuracy quite a bit. With 32 gauge, we've had really, really good accuracy out of the Sabos, and sometimes we've had very poor accuracy out of the Sabos, but that's just how it goes. Set that aside. Now, this one is a bit different. As you can see, it does have a really deep hollow point cavity, which makes it rear heavy. And uh, rear heavy projectiles like this, they cannot stabilize out of a smooth bore. These will tumble wildly, more so than a solid projectile like that. This is not something you ever want to use for a smooth bore. However, in a rifled barrel, obviously that will stabilize them. This is a 510 diameter Mr. Hollow Point 225 grain slug, which is what we use for our 32 gauge, and these are decently accurate. Moving on from that, we have stuff like this. I believe this is a Hornady Great Plains bullet. I think it's 375 grains, and this one is a hybrid of a Foster slug, which we will get to in just a moment. As you can see, it has a hollow point, by the way. If this is not a Hornady Great Plains bullet, correct me. Uh, it's like 5 in the morning right now and kind of foggy. I just felt like making a, a video, but you can see it does have a hollow skirt to it, sort of like a mini projectile, mini ball, whatever you guys want to call it. It'll work just fine. We're not uh, too fancy around here. But, yeah, it's sort of a hybrid between a solid conical and a foster slug. But it is still not nose heavy. Again, it has a hollow point that takes weight out of the nose and the skirt is not very deep at all. This cannot stabilize out of a smooth bore. These are more Mr. Hollow Point slugs. Let me get the 32 gauge back over here. 510, 225 grain, 32 gauge. This is a 62 cal, 20 gauge, and this one is 440 grains, a little bit over an ounce. And again, you can see really deep hollow point, 20 gauge. And uh, it's it's rear heavy, cannot stabilize out of a smooth bore. Now, I said biggest to smallest here, or smallest to biggest, sorry. And uh, you can see that one is actually, well, it's shorter, but it's fatter. This is a 12-gauge Mr. Hollow Point 1,082 grain slug. It's uh, 2.46 ounces. We shot these quite a bit. We have several videos on them. These are one of the most accurate 12-gauge slugs on the market. They're intended for air rifles. However, they work very well out of rifled shotguns, too. But again, same thing. Really, really deep hollow point in there. It's uh, actually... Oh, uh, it's a little bit over halfway through the slug. That's a massive hollow point. Really lives up to its name, but again, rear heavy. Will not stabilize out of a smooth bore. We shot these at 25 yards the first time we ever shot them on camera. And uh, 25 yards, they did not hit the like six foot by four foot piece of paper, we, uh, cardboard we had. They uh, they missed that bad. They These really need a rifled barrel, even at close range. And this one is a 10 gauge Mr. Hollow Point. This one weighs 665 grains, so not quite as heavy as that 1,082 grain slug, but it is 10 gauge. And again, same thing. Not nose heavy, can't stabilize out of a smooth board. You guys get the picture now? Now this one here, I don't know exactly what the slug is. I think it is the Twister slug. Again, correct me if I'm wrong. We have shot so many of these Russian-style slugs that uh, I've just forgot what some of them are. But it is a very cool slug nonetheless, and these are decently accurate too. This one, you can put in smooth bore, and again, it is rear heavy. It can't stabilize out of smooth bore unless you attach it to a tail wad. You can see it has a hole run right through it, and a hollow point cavity that also doubles as a space for a screw to go through. You run a screw through this and attach it to this tail wad, and that makes the whole thing nose heavy. Obviously, this hunk of lead right here is going to weigh a lot more than this uh, BRP-12 tail wad slash brush wad, gas seal, whatever you guys want to call it. 
it can go by multiple different names, but that makes it nose heavy, and these are pretty accurate out of a smoothbore. They don't require rifling if they're attached to a tail wad. Gives it drag. Finally, on to the Foster slugs here. Let me get this one over here. This is a Remington 12 gauge, one ounce Foster slug. As you can see, they are completely hollow inside on the bottom. These are nose heavy. They are self-stabilizing in the air. They create their own drag and as you guys probably know, foster slugs are very, very hard to beat for accuracy. They're even out, they're even accurate out to 100 yards. We've done that. We might want to do that again on camera. Yeah, foster slugs are awesome. It's probably the way to go for a smooth bore if you want good accuracy at long range. However, in modern times, in the last, well, let's say 20 years or so, these are now widely available slugs with a tail wad this is a 16 gauge dgs slug dangerous game slug it's made by guandi and uh these are pretty accurate these come in multiple gauges actually every gauge except for 10 that i know of i've never seen one for 10 gauge but i'm sure they exist or someone's done it but this is a one ounce slug hard cast lid and it is attached to a tail wad it functions just like this one would if it had a screw attached to it, it does not right now, but same idea. The The tail wad here creates drag, stabilizes the slug. Let's see if I can pull this off with one hand, and uh, it looks like, no, it's a pretty good fit. One second, guys. You can see it does have a center piece of lead sticking up in the middle, and that corresponds to the hole that is in the stem of the tail wad. Now, I'm saying stem. I don't know if that's a proper term, but still, yep. It connects pretty good to this. It has ribs right here that help grip the inside of the slug, you know, up in the cavity. Again, that's a one ounce 16 gauge slug. And the DGS line comes in 12, 16, 20, 28 gauge and 410. As far as I know, they don't come in 10 gauge, but uh, they could, who knows? Set that aside now, we're done with that. This is a 10 gauge Federal Foster slug. And uh, they're actually, technically closer to 11 gauge these are 747 diameter 10 gauge bore diameter is 775 that's its nominal diameter so these are quite undersized for a 10 gauge slug we recently did a video on these it's not out yet but it will be soon and uh, not surprisingly the full choke did the best because these are full choke diameter or very close to it again closer to an 11 gauge slug than 10 gauge 12 gauge bore diameter nominally is 729, so basically 73 cal. 10 gauge 775, very close to 78 cal. And this is right in the middle. Just to speak more about that, it seems federal slugs for their 10 gauge, 20 gauge, don't know about their 410, and 16 gauge are all undersized and they're all roughly full choke diameter. Winchester 20 gauge slugs for sure are also undersized. I don't know about the Remingtons. I've only ever had the 12s and they're full bore. Moving on once again, this is a solid projectile. It is a straight 50 cal. I think this, yeah, it's a one ounce slug. Get out of here. Come on, you can do it. There we go. Yep, straight 50 cal solid here with a polymer tip, sort of like a Hornady VMAX or something. But uh, yeah, these are pretty cool. It's just a shame that the Paradox Expander Sabo slugs weren't very accurate. The plastic right here, um, it's not very strong. It could be a little bit beefier where it hinges down at the bottom. Uh, we had Sabo failures. One or two or three of the pedals fell off and that really hurt accuracy. The ones that didn't fail, we had uh, holes very, very close to touching. So, um, Whoever makes this, if you happen to see this video, maybe make the Sabo a little bit stronger. This being 50 cal, it's very close to 32 gauge. If you were to drop this into a 32 gauge, it would uh, smooth bore anyway. Just tumble and fly wildly and wouldn't be very accurate. I actually have a 32 gauge hull sitting right here. Again, 50 cal. Oops, as you can see, it just drops right in. You really need a 51 cal for 32 gauge, but 50 cal will work too uh, sometimes. But uh, get that back in there, and these do require a rifled barrel, rifled choke. So it works with some Sabos. This one, I wouldn't imagine it would. 
that one's quite heavy and quite long i know one ounce isn't very heavy for 12 gauge but that is a quite heavy or quite long sabo i don't think a rifle choke would ever stabilize that quite right and then we have the aq slug here it is attached to a tail wad and again this is sort of a hybrid of a foster slug and a uh, a solid the cavity on this isn't very wide it i don't think this is nose heavy it sort of reminds me of a lee drive key slug the 7 8 ounce version this is a one ounce slug by the way and again attached to a tail wad and these are very accurate out of a smooth bore or a rifled barrel we've done a video on these actually two of them and at 42 yards we had uh i think at the most a two inch group three shot groups the best was under an inch. These are a very, very good slug. If you want to use these, you got to have a gas seal of some kind. What I like to do is use these and set the AQ slug over it, roll crimp, or you could use a flex seal, which I don't have sitting here. Let me get one real quick. A flex seal wad, also known as the FS-12, and set that over top of it. And then you can fold crimp it if you don't want to roll crimp. I've also seen people use these with an X12X gas seal. Just set that right over top of the gas seal and put them in mini shells. I haven't done that myself, but maybe that's something we'll do in the future. Pretty cool idea there. I know someone's going to ask this, and no, you can't attach these. This is the Mr. Hollow Point 1082 grain slug to a tail wad using a screw. We've done that the first time we ever filmed these, and uh, it's still uh, not nose heavy at all. <laughs> way way too much weight in the rear it can't stabilize out of a smooth bore if it's just attached to a tail wad with a screw these absolutely need a rifled barrel anyways guys i just wanted to make this video because we get asked a few times a week if we can use or if they can use i guess 357 magnum 44 41 magnum 50 cal whatever it may be solid projectiles in a whatever given gauge and yeah you can but you won't have any accuracy at long range or even anything past 20 25 yards really which is not very far at all can it be done absolutely all day long you just won't have any good accuracy now if you're just uh, out trying to have some fun you know plink or whatever by all means go for it but if you're going to use this for hunting or something or you want to try this for hunting it's not going to work i would never ever do that not very wise uh, you could hit the animal in i don't know a leg a foot in the head somewhere you don't really want to hit it just wouldn't do that or obviously you know you could just miss completely which is really what you don't want if all you have is a smooth bore and you're wanting to use slugs what i recommend doing is getting a few different brands federal remington winchester whatever it may be and uh, going to whatever range you expect or will expect to shoot whatever game you're shooting at Grab an IC choke, cylinder bore, mod full. I wouldn't go past full because there are no foster slugs on the market that are smaller than a full choke diameter. And just grouping them. See what your gun likes the best. Say you got a 20 gauge and uh, you got some federal 20 gauge, 20 gauge slugs. You might find that the full choke is the most accurate. You may find the modified is the most accurate. You may find that your gun don't like federals at all and likes Winchesters. That's just how it goes with shotguns. They're all different. They're all picky. My 32 gauge in particular is very, very picky. The rifled one with what it likes. So anyways, I just wouldn't recommend using solid projectiles or conicals in a smooth bore. I just wouldn't recommend it. They don't work out too well outside of, again, 20, 25 yards. They're very, very hit and miss. They fly wildly, tumble through the air, have very poor accuracy. It's just not recommended to do. But anyway, guys, uh, that's going to end this one here. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.